Good evening friends. In this session, I will be covering a very important area of a day-to-day -day database administrator's activity that is uh, looking at the deadlocks that have occurred on server. On a very high transactional servers, we often encounter uh, deadlocks because of the volume of transactions, jobs, processing and, and the other applications using uh, our databases and uh, where locks occur on, on a table and get escalated. So uh, as a DBA we often uh, need to go to the root cause of uh, the deadlocks. Uh, by default what happens is, is a SQL server uh, ha takes the authority of allowing uh, identifying deadlocks and then killing one of the processes and allowing the other to uh, perform the activity. Uh, yet we can we have the authority uh, from in terms of coding where we can uh, allow a particular code to be executed no matter what or, or set the deadlock priority so we'll be looking we'll be uh, seeing a couple of things first we'll be we'll be looking at how we can trace a deadlock we'll simulate a scenario of deadlock and then see how we can trace a deadlock and how we can override a, a deadlock and allow our codes uh, to execute no matter what uh, I mean uh, we can customize the deadlocks priority also so here in this session uh, we'll be looking at all these things uh, so to begin with what I have here is I'll be creating two table for an employee admin employees and the bank employees table with the de department ID so let me create that first next I have I'll be using profiler to uh, set the trace to start the trace so uh, let me connect and uh, let me call it deadlock and uh, let's save this to a file called deadlocks.trc right and uh, we are setting the file size to be 5 MB we are cool with that and uh, we are going to enable the file rollover file rollover means once the file is full to the size of the capacity we have a given it would start rolling over or, or, or uh, setting your data to uh, to the start of it and uh, next let's also allow a time uh, a stop time we can schedule a stop time for a trace once we start uh, running this uh, trace uh, to not bother your uh, to not you know overload your server because uh, traces are costly so remember that don't just uh, allow tracing to uh, uh, go on indefinitely next uh, let's add the deadlock events let's go to the locking and uh, next uh, add event id 50, 59 and 25 so these are the two which we would also like to include apart from the default ones and uh, we have the column filters take a look at the column field filters it will not uh, make any change here and uh, the next thing that we do is run this trace now before I run it uh, okay I pause it here now and what I do is I do not want uh, to do this uh, via profiler that's not my way of doing things so let's uh, uh, use tsql because uh, and then run this trace so I'm generating the script definition this is the way you would export the script definition of the trace that you are currently setting up so and I save it so that's saved I don't need the profiler anymore I can exit this uh, let's open the definition and take a look at it so this is the definition that we have created for for the trace if you look at you have the event IDs and the event ID 59 and 25 here point to the traces uh, for deadlocks and uh, also we have the status as one uh, that is the start status and now if you would like to what all traces are running currently on your server you can see the same so this is the default trace that always runs on, on any SQL server and uh, we'll use tsql to trace and uh, when we run this piece of code when we run this piece of code there will be a value value returned which will be uh, your trace id uh, uh, so keep a note of that and we'll 
save the trace file here so let me just delete this and let's run this trace so right so we have run this trace and we have grid it has returned me a id of 2 so keep a note of your trace id which has been returned now if you look at you should be seeing another trace of id 2 and status active now what i do is for this id let me just pause this trace once you you can start the trace and then pause it so what will happen is your trace will be in a disabled state of zero so uh, when we when you start you have started a trace for for deadlock and then you have disabled it now to enable it i would and, and and kind of schedule it on the production server i would use the sql agent to do so i have created a sql job where the sql job has a simple step of resume trace trace for deadlocking so you can actually uh, feed in your trace id and then re-enable the trace with a value of 2 uh, uh, sorry uh, with the value of 1 which would re-enable it so I am just feeding the trace ID to this and you can schedule it as per your uh, whenever you want to start remember that we have given an end time for our trace so the end time will be taken care anyways so if you go here you see the end time of, of the trace where the trace will stop and also the file where the trace, uh, trace will be saved so this is the details now what we are doing is, is simply we are starting the, uh, the, uh, the trace so I am just feeding the trace id and then I have scheduled it so uh, let's run this job I mean it is we can schedule it uh, as per but for, for this demo I am just starting this job right so this job is executed now if you look at our trace it will be in an enabled state it is enabled now now let's as we had seen we had created two tables and inserted uh, three records each now let's connect and, and uh, So we have, I have to, to replicate the deadlock scenario, I have created two sessions and uh, these two sessions I will be just updating the data to the table and we will try to re replicate the scenario. So first is for session 1 I run this. query and then I try to update for the session 2 so and then I just try to update one more record
okay we need to simulate the deadlock scenario so let me just try this So we have simulated, so there was a deadlock which occurred and we have simulated this scenario. So let's, uh, now this must have been traced, so let's just stop the trace and set it for the trace ID to set it to 0, uh, sorry 2 which would stop it. So let's stop the trees first. Okay, we call it a zero to stop it, and then we clear the. Now let's clear it from the memory. Okay, you're right. So we are done now. So we have seen that there was a deadlock between two uh, SP IDs here, and and the deadlock was. Terminated. Now uh, we'll come back to this page and, and we'll try to load the trace file. So this is uh, the way you would load a trace file to a to a table, and then take a look uh, because this is the file which which has done the tracing. This is the file which has done the tracing. Let's uh, load this file to a, a table on our server. Right. So that uh, the table has been loaded. So if you see all the tracing has been done uh, now there is a lot of things which uh, have been traced all the t sequels and the update statements and everything now if you want to filter it uh, you would filter it on the basis of the event class first uh, event class 59 and 25 are the ones uh, remember for 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 deadlocks so you would see two sp ids you would see the SP IDs on, on based on which the deadlocks has occurred. So you have 65 and 67. So do the next filter that you put is you also add these two SP IDs and then query it. So you would get the tracing that uh, that is occurred in in the order of time that is for these two SP IDs. So. So now to explain uh, how you would interpret uh, this deadlock statements is first you would you would see that deadlock has uh, before this deadlock chain uh, you would see the two statements which have conflicted so this is 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 the order in which it has conflicted first we have run this uh, SQL statement and then we have run this set department ID to four and next after the deadlock has occurred you would see the first t sql statement now the first t sql denotes uh, the sp id or, or the t sql which was chosen as a victim and terminated so this statement was never executed so you would see when you read it uh, be sure i'm just reiterating it be sure that the first statement was the one which was chosen as a victim and the second was was the one which was executed perfectly onto the server so this statement is is the one which was actually terminated by sql server uh, so that is how you would interpret your deadlocks and uh, now what i want you to show is i have told you how to schedule it how to stop it and the next thing I would want you to uh, see is how you can set a priority or override your uh, deadlocks from occurring. Now what I want is I do not want this uh, to be chosen as, as, as a deadlock victim. So what I do is let's roll back this transaction. Okay. And I you would set a priority so th this statement ranges from minus 10 to 10 
uh, which is uh, the value of a deadlock a priority of, of the code that you want to execute so let me put it to the highest level I set this deadlock priority of this code to 10 means that this code should be executed no matter what so, or, or this SP ID of the transaction should be executed no matter what so let's run this code once again and see how the deadlock goes I've executed it and and let me execute it once again now if you see the other process has been chosen as a victim of the deadlock and my piece of code which I wanted to be executed no matter what has run through successfully so this is just a way of, of showing you uh, how you would want your deadlock priority set and how you would override your code uh, when two processes try to run into deadlocks so uh, I have shown you how to use profiler how to set the statuses how to save how to schedule the deadlock and how you would want to set a priority I hope this uh, article is really helpful to you and, and, and is uh, able to provide you some amount of insights on deadlocks uh, troubleshooting tracking mechanism thank you so much friends have a great day bye